All right, so let's start class. And this is the second lesson on probability. <coughs> we, uh, in the last homework, I noticed that there was a couple problems the answer is wrong, so I hope you already correct it. I, I send the message to all the parents. So now uh, we're going to continue study the uh, probability problems. Okay. All right, so we, uh, I'm going to uh, discuss the following problem first. So there are, okay, we have a three piece of paper by a, a labeled with ABC drawn from a box. Uh, one by one, okay, what is the probability that of drawing A first? Okay, so that's the question. So I have a, I have a three pieces paper identical, okay? And the label was A and B, C, okay? They are, they are drawn uh, uh, one by one, okay? At the random, okay? So what is the probability that the first one is A? Okay. <clears throat> right, to solve this problem, Probably get answer already, you know, you can, you can, yeah, just one third, right? Now, there are a couple ways to, to do that, you know, you, you draw one by one, okay? But, you have to draw three. But, but uh, it's same as, you will see that same as just draw one and get an A, okay? So, then, uh, the, the, the probability is, first of all, the number of, all possible outcomes. If you draw one by one, you put them in the order, right? And there will be three factorial, many different uh, uh, sequences. Okay, could be A, B, C, could be C, A, right? Now, if you want to get the first one, uh, uh, the, yeah, the first, the first step, you get an A, then then uh, uh, then uh, there's no choice. Just have a way, right? So that's uh, that's called design outcomes. Then uh, A must be the first one. Then you have a two factorial many different choices for the second one for the for the third one. Okay. So the difference as uh, the ratio will be two factorial over three factorial. And after simplifying, just equal to one, one third. Okay, so let me repeat again. First of all, you, you count the number of all possible comps, right? Which is three factorial. Okay. Now maybe you have more than three: the A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know, you got many, right? So we can change the problem a little bit. And you draw one by one, and draw three. The first one is A, right? And uh, uh, maybe the answer will be slightly different, okay? So here, I just, I just read. So the desired outcomes, you just need to count those. The first one is A. But the first A is then no choice, must be fixed, A. Then the second and third one, you only have a two, two uh, piece of papers you can choose. So two factorial. That the answer would be one, one, one third. Now, the same question, Okay, but I do have a uh, many, uh, uh, more than, uh, yeah, uh, let's see, the same, similar question, three, uh, three pieces of paper, okay, uh, with jaw, okay. From a box containing, uh, let's say, containing five, five pieces of paper. 
Đấy. Label A, B, C, D, E. Okay. So there's a box, you know, there inside there was five there. Five pieces of paper. But you only draw uh, three of them, right? Okay, right. one, two, three. So what is the probability that the join, join A first? Well, this time, right, the same idea, you're going to have put three, one, three, so one by one, right? Draw the, uh, yeah, we say the three stairs, one by one, okay? Then the number of, of all possible comps, this time is not three factorial. You know, you have five pieces of paper there. So you have to draw, it's a one, right? It's going to be five, five, right choices and four choices and three choices okay the three steps one by one you know you draw you draw uh, uh, the first piece of paper the second piece of paper the third piece of paper okay those are all possible comps okay then you want to make sure the design comps will be the first one must be a so there will be a no choices right so a is already fixed you pick up a okay this is a, yeah, this is a num, this is a, the design all comes. Then for the second or for the third one, doesn't matter, right? You can choose any of this four, right? Then can choose, um, you have three left, right? Then you have three choices, right? After you simplify, you get one of five, not the one of three, okay? Right. <clears throat> yeah, so you have here's five choices, four choices, three choices, here's four choices, and three choices. Yeah. So the product, there's a ratio of the products is going to be one of one of five. All right. So now let's, let, let's, let's look at another problem. Okay. So, uh, So first of all, the bag contains uh, many chips, okay? So contains, uh, let me draw the picture here, contains three R's, three red chips, two blue chips, two white chips, okay? <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, you know, Seven, okay. Seven chips in different colors. In three different colors. Okay. So if a chip, uh, if a chip is selected at random, what is the probability that the chip is red or blue? Red or blue, okay. Yeah, yeah, I will ask you to think about this, okay? What is the probability? Is that gambling? Hmm? It's not gambling, it's all proof, okay? So what's your chance? So you're going to pick up two. Uh, just only one. In our answers, this is a, this is, a, I think this is a simple problem, okay? Five over seven. Five over seven. That's right, five over seven. The reason is, 
you only pick up a one. Okay, I'm gonna modify this part a little bit. You only pick up a one. So there'll be one of the, you know, there'll be seven choices, right? Options. So you, so there's seven, so the denominator, all the number of all possible outcomes, all the, uh, the number of all possible outcomes will be seven. But the desired outcomes will be, you know, five, you know, will be, it will be two plus red or blue, right? Three plus two blue, so it's five. That's the reason you have a five chips either in red or in blue, right? Okay, so that's now, if two chips are selected, right, at the random. What is the probability that one of the chip is red, one of the chip is blue? Okay. Uh, when is red, the wind's blue. Okay, each. So you understand, right? So, you know, you, you, the, the order doesn't matter, just grab two chips. Okay, right? you want to say, oh, what does the property get? When is red, the wind's blue. You can, you can, you can, you can, uh, you, can uh, you can select one by one. Right? Okay, so this is a more challenging, right? So you can, uh, uh, okay, let, let, let's say red, 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 blue, 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 white, 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 right? You're going to select one by one, put the here, put the here, right? Uh, let's, let's assume, <coughs> you know, you count as the order, okay? The pattern will be either the first one is red, the second one will be blue, or the first one is blue, the second is red, right? Right? Either they saw that. Right? Can you figure out the problem? David says one over seven. Kevin says two over seven. Hmm? Four over seven, come on. <laughs> and then three over seven. <laughs> <laughs> hey, any? I just want to get one more answer, which will match with uh, one of these three different answers. Who is just? Just here. What? Just Jasper. 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 Yeah, you, you, you know, you selected two chips from this pack, okay? You can do that one by one, two by, you know, at the same time, you pick up two, that's the math. The probability should be the same. All right. So let's do one by one, right? Let's assume that one by one. So then we put, then they put in the order, okay? And uh, so the probability is the denominator is clear, right? You have a seven there, one by one, so it'll be seven times six. So first one you have seven choice, second one is only six choices. So now let's look at the pattern. Okay, you have to select red first, but you only have three choices. Then you select blue, you only have two choices. But another possible pattern is B and R, so you have to select the B. Black, right? 
and the red. So the answer will be two times six. Seven times six, six cancelled out. Maybe two over seven. Right? Two over seven. I think it's the correct answer. Yeah, li you list all the possible, uh, uh, you list the, the, the number of all desired outcomes. Right? There'll be two, uh, two patterns, R and B and B and R, because we come in order. Okay? So it should be two of seven. So there are many questions on this problem. You know, you can you can select it one by one, uh, select two uh, chips by one by one. Like what? What is probably that the second one is red? Okay, this is more complicated. But it's probably that no, no one of them is the rest, you know. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so let's do that next problem. Okay. Uh, we're going to uh, work on this. What is the probability of rolling? Lowering a sum of seven by posing two fair dice. Okay, so that this is a number, right? So one, two, three, you know, right? Another one could be six. Two, three, you know? So add them together, one plus six equals seven. Something like that. Yeah, what is the probability? You will get the sum of seven. Yeah, you can all, always just, you can, you know, you can, choose, you can choose one dice first and the second, right? You record the two numbers, right? You can record them in order. You believe it's uh, one half chance to get seven? I think the chance of getting seven would be very much lower. Is there a question like this on the homework? I don't know. Okay. Right. So you basically you're going to pick up two numbers out of the digits from one to six, right? Twice. Okay? So you record the two numbers, the first number, second number, let's assume that. And then we want to make sure the sum of those two digits will be seven, okay? Okay? So the denominator will be, it's always will be, you know, how many choices for the first one? Six. How many choices for the second one? Six. The so total is 36, okay? Then look at the desired outcomes. One plus six is gonna be seven, right? Then two plus five equals seven. And three plus four equals seven. Four plus three equals seven, right? And the five plus two equals seven. Six plus one equals seven. So you have a six choice. Six, the number of all six outcomes. Okay, so the answer will be one over six. Right? 
Yeah, because we count as order. So one plus six, one six is different from from uh, six six and one. Okay, the order. You know, we, it's separate. You know, the first die, second die. We just pick up two numbers, right? From one to six. Pick up two numbers. Okay, the first number, second. Number. You write down it, right? The first one you have. You know, if the first one is one, the second one is unique. You cannot uh, uh, get as digits, right? If the first one is one, then second one must be six. If the first one is six, second one must be one, right? So the probability is one over six, right? Uh, all right. So try a different problem. When all the two digit integers are written, what is a fraction of the digits written as uh, three uh, as a three? Okay, this is a slight different from the problem of home. So when all two digits um, two digit integers. Uh, written what fraction of the digits written are threes okay so you're going to write down lots of digits here okay and uh, two digits right and the one 11, 12, 13, blah, 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 and the 99, right? Those are the two digit integers. So what the fraction of the digits written are threes, okay? So how many two digit integers there? None. But how many digits you write down? 90 times two, 180, okay? So think about this problem. Yeah, please, please work on this. Yeah, we're talking about the digits, okay? So, so total you have a ninety, you know, ninety nine minus nine, which is ninety, ninety integers, but ninety integers are used. Each integer you use a two digits, so 90 times two, 180 digits are written. Okay, that's my thing. Okay. Okay, but among them, how many? How many is the threes? Okay, how many threes you can do like this? You can say 13, 23, but then I skip. A, you know. Yeah, 30, 31, right? All the way to 39, that's different, right? So, so 43, right? 53, 63, 73, 83, 93, okay? Then you deal with, you know, those special, right? So on the top, we can, let's count them, just count them, right? And then make sure 33 is double counted, right? right? So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have eight, three digits. Then from 30 to 39, right? From 30 to 39, there are 10 integers, but, but 33 is double, so it's 11, right? Right?
So what's the answer? Hmm? Yeah, 13, 23, 43, each time you use the one, three, one, three digit, right? You use the one, you know, each time you use the one, three, so you have a total eight integers here, right? So you get use eight, okay? Then for 30, 31, 30, all the way to 39, Right, you have a, uh, you have a ten digits integers there. So each integer, you know, you have to use the one three, but except the thirty three, so you have to use one more. So it's actually eleven. Total, total, you use the eight eleven plus eight, then divide by one hundred eighty. I don't think you can simplify. Okay. Now it's not a, it's not eighteen. I think it's nine, nineteen. You use a nineteen threes. Right? Do you agree? So it's going to be 19 over 180. Then you cannot simplify. Okay, our next problem is What is probability of lowering two number uh, number cubes Each with digits one to six and getting distinct uh, numbers on the top. Of the two cubes. Yeah. So, 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 so you, you're going to, you're going to roll two cubes, number cubes, right? And you want to get, you got two numbers. So I want, what, what is the probability that the two numbers are different? The one is, the other one is two. Okay, not that. Right? Okay. Yeah, in other words, you're going to pick up two numbers. Right, from one to six. You write down those two numbers. What is probability that those two, uh, pick up two digits? Those two digits are distinct. Is it 30 over 36? Can you simplify it? Five over six. All right. Five over six is correct. Okay. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so you're going to write down two numbers, right? But then the first one can be any of when the, when from one to six. So be six. Then second is also six. The total you have a. So they have a, a 36 
uh, possible outcomes. But you are only interested in those with the two distinct uh, in, uh, digits. Two distinct digits is how do you do that, right? First of all, you just randomly pick up one, right? You have a six choices, but then the second one cannot be the same as the first one. Since already one digit is used, then have five digits left, right? So those are five are different from the one you already used. Then it's a five. So six kids cancel out, it's five over six. Right? Yeah, you can do like that, yeah. All right. Uh, All right, so next one will be different from the problem before, okay? We have four girls and the five boys. They are going to be seated in a row, okay? My question is, what is the probability that the students at the end of the row are both boys? <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna randomly, you know, put put this nine students in a row. What is the probability that both two ends there, the boys there? Two people at the end. Yeah. Of the students at the end of the row are both boys. Right? Right? A possible pattern is a B, go. And the B, and the B, and the B, and the B, right? So look at this, right? The boy, boy, you know. Right? Two boys at the end, end, two ends of the room. Jasper? Kevin, can you simplify? Seven factor of a nine factoria. Uh, I think that is wrong. The number is larger than this. At least my answer. Now, if we join the Kevin among the five boys, and you also put another condition, join the Kevin must, John must sit on the left side, Kevin must sit on the right hand side, 
then the answer will be seven factor of nine factor. Okay. Okay, let me repeat again. Seven factor of nine factor is correct answer for another problem. Another problem is assuming John and Kevin are among those five boys, John must sit on the left hand side and the Kevin must sit on the right hand side. Okay, in that case, then you get answer seven factor of nine. So I will ask you another question later. I just assume that, yeah, join the Kevin among the sport, among the five boys, and they, are, they must sit on the, at the end of the point, end of the rows. Okay, when I give you a little bit more time, the competition is simple, just needed to to figure out the numerate, right, of the fraction in the probability. How about, David? David? Yeah, do you have answer? Oh. <laughs> the, 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 this is a probability, okay? The number is, uh, is always a fraction between zero and one. It's not 240. Oh, 240 over nine factors. Well, uh, are you able to simplify? All right. So the probability. Right, the denominator is you have a total of nine, so it's a nine factor, no problem. Okay, so in order to make sure those two boys are sit on the both sides, right? Left side, you know, left, left hand side, the so right hand side, right? How do you make arrangement? Step one, put the one boy on the left hand side, right? How many choices? Five choices. Step two, you have to put another boy on the right hand side, right? Otherwise, you're gonna have trouble you know, if the boy is sitting in the middle. So, you have to make sure the two ends are taken care of. So, there are only four boys left, it's a four. Then, for the remaining boys and girls, three boys left, four girls left, seven students left that can randomly select the seats in the middle. Okay? So, there'll be fast seven factorial. Got it? So the idea, this is called principle, you know, honey, right? Then you simplify five, seven factorial, nine factorial is seven factorial, eight times nine. So seven half factorial is canceled out. And uh, four and eight is become two. So the answer will be five over 18. That's it. Do you get it? You know, just count it, right? You have to divide this procedure into several steps, each step. But you have to design the, the, this procedure in order to guarantee the two boys sit on the two ends. So you have to make sure, as your teacher, you have to make sure that you select the boys first, right? The two seats occupy the boys before you put the students in a, in a row, okay? Good 
So I, I, uh, in you know, I still the same problem. Four girls and five boys are to be seated in a row. Okay. So what I want to get. Okay. I said that Kevin and David are among them. Okay, that voice, right? Clear, that voice. <laughs> what is the probability What is the probability that Kevin and David uh, uh, are seated at the end of the end of the room. Okay, and modify a little bit. You randomly put nine students in a row. But you want to find the probability that Kevin and David, they are, you know, with the probability that they are sitting at the two ends and, and the two ends of, and of the row. What, and, um, okay. Step one, right? The probability is the denominator is still uh, a nine factorial, right? <laughs> but uh, you have to make a, make sure Kevin and David sit first, right? But there are two seats there for two students to choose, Kevin and and, and David. So there'll be only there'll be two factorial choices. The first step. The first step, put Kevin and David at two ends of the room. Then you have uh, seven students left. You can randomly put them in the middle. Okay? So the answer will be, you know, it's two here, seven factorial, seven factorial, eight and then nine, right? So seven had to cancel out, and this will be four, and the win over 36. Yeah, great. Kevin did it correctly this time. Okay. Okay, so our next problem. Okay. Kara has four different pairs of earrings. Okay? And uh, so they're in the drawer, you know, they're all separate, okay? For example, this is the first type. Then you have a square, let's make sure it doesn't matter, right? And this type, <laughs> and, uh, and a circle type, right? So they are, they are in the drawer, you know, right? So the question is, if we randomly pick up two, you know, maybe they put each of them put in the box. You cannot tell the difference, right? So what is the probability that two randomly selected earrings will be a matching pair? Wasn't 
the wanting, the, the wish, the possibility that you want it to be would be two times one, or, or two times one, right? And then the bottom would be the total number of pairs, which is eight, so it would be one over four. All right, so you have a, you know, you have a total of six theories, right? So let's step by step. The, the number of all possible outcomes, okay, will be eight. Mm -hmm. You can, if the order doesn't matter, right? You pick up two earrings, but you grab two if you don't count the order. Okay? If you don't count the order, so what do you get? Okay? The number of, you know, you get, yeah, the number of the pairs of uh, earrings. Yeah, the number of pairs. Okay? This is going to be just like select two students out of eight to form a committee, right? So that would be eight bacteria, it's two bacteria or six bacteria, right? Which is going to be uh, six bacteria here, eight times seven, two, six bacteria, cancel out, 20, 28, okay? Four times seven, right? This is a, yeah, it's a four times seven. So this is the number of uh, possible outcomes, the number of, of the pairs of uh, earring you're gonna get. But then a match, not necessarily match. So you need to figure out, right, the number of these style outcomes, which is a matching pairs. How many matching pairs there? Now there are four. There are four matching pairs, right? Clearly, right? There are four matching pairs. Four. So the answer will be four, the denominator seven times eight. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is a four. Seven times twelve. Yeah. So it would be one over seven. Now the three over seven. Okay. There are four matching pairs. The number of uh, of all possible pairs you're gonna get is gonna be twenty eight, four times seven. Right. So the ratio will be one over seven, just like that. Right. I got it. <laughs> okay. You did understand now this problem? Why is it seven? Why is it seven? Because this four this is a four, four times seven here. Right? That's in the denominator. Yeah. Because four over yeah. So Kara has a four different pairs of earrings. Them messed up. Okay, that's four. You can put it into eight different bo eight boxes, identical box, so you cannot see it, right? Now you can randomly pick up two boxes and open it, right, to see if they match. So what is the probability you get the matching pairs? So first of all, you have eight boxes, okay? Then uh, eight little boxes. Then you pick up pair. Then how many pairs of boxes you get? You get. Right, eight factorial over two factorial divided by six factorial. That's the standard formula left, which is four times seven after you simplify. Then you then you look at the number of these are all comes, which is matching pairs. That's only four matching pairs, clearly. So that's a four over seven times four, that's one over seven. Okay. Right? 
Right, so the next one is uh, is a number theory power. A digit D is selected from from zero, one, two, three, all the way to nine. What is the what is the probability that? The four-digit in, uh, integer, 84D4, is divisible by four. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you're going to, you see, you have a four-digit integer, but the, the tenth digit is uh, missing, so you just randomly write down, uh, put a digit there, okay? The digit could be zero, could be one, could be two, or could be nine. <laughs> and what is the probability <laughs> you get an integer which is divisible by four? So you have to think about uh, how to find a simple condition so that uh, it is divisible by four. Now my hint is 100 is divisible by four. Okay, 100 is divisible by four. One hundred divided by four. That's my hint. You have to determine all the possible values for d, so that this four-digit integer is divided by four. Okay, what are the possible digits? You can make it. Make it divided by four. No, 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 all of them, this is a four digit integer, such that the four. Is it, but isn't it the last number divisible by four? Divisible by four. Not necessarily. 24 is not a divisible by four. Yes or no? Four times six. Yes. 34 is not divisible by four. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? So 8,434 is not divisible by four. But in other words, can you determine the digit D so that for 8,400 D4, right, is divisible by four, okay? 8,400, right? This can be written, right? So clearly this is a divisible by four, right? Always, okay? So that means, uh, that means this should be divisible by four. And if, only if, D is going to be zero, and 14 is not divided by four, 24, right? And 64, 84, right? So you only have these four choices. But how many digits there, right? The 10 digits, uh, uh, one, uh, zero, two, four, yeah, I'm missing four, yeah, 44, yeah. So the probability is going to be five over 10, and that's just a window two, okay? You have a 10 digits to choose. Only five of them can make it divisible by four, okay?
Right. So, uh, okay. So eight students. Yeah. Let's do this one. Eight students uh, are going. Uh, And this is about uh, uh, seats arrangement again. Right? If the students are to be seated in a row, which is divided into left and the right, So you have a uh, four seats, and four seats on the on the right hand side, four seats on the left hand side. Okay. Now let me use that uh, Kevin and David again. Kevin and David are among them. Okay. Uh, what is the probability that Kevin and David sits on the same side. So in other words, you randomly put eight students in a row, and there's left and the right. Same side means on the same left hand side, same right hand side. Right? So what is the probability David and Kevin on the same side? Okay. So the number of all, all possible outcomes, right? Possible arrangement. is gonna be eight factorial, no question about that. Right, you just permutate. Kevin, your answer is wrong this time, okay? Try it again. Yeah. It's not like they they both should sit on at two end points. Right? Jasper? Yeah, how do you make when you if you're a teacher, right? How do you make arrangements? Make sure David and Kevin are on the same side. Do you allow them to select the seats first? Yes. Otherwise, if you put other students there, then then you will say, "Oops, now David, you have to sit down the left side. Kevin, you have to sit down the other side." Right? That's right. So. You have to take care of this first if they want to sit on the same side. Same side does not mean they have to sit next to each other. I, I can even put an additional condition they must sit on the next to each other. Then they'll be different. Slightly in the more restriction on that. Okay. All right, so how do you, how do you make, a, make sure that they sit on the same side? So you can say, David, go ahead to pick up a seat, okay? So how many seats for the David you can choose? Eight. 
Okay, so for David, then you have to have a, you have eight seats you can choose. Then you have to make sure Kevin will sit on the same side. So you you have no choice. You just let Kevin to select so that's three. Three. That's right. So if David sit on the left hand side, obviously let three seats left. If David sit on the right hand side, then three seats left. So for Kevin, only three seats left. Okay. And then, then for the remaining six students, you have a six bacteria, many different arrangements there. All right. So the answer will be eight, eight times three times six factorial and eight factorial. Eight factorial, six factorial, seven and eight. You cancel out six factorial and you also cancel out eight. Then you get three over seven. Okay. Got it? You understand, right? Yes. Is today the last day of probability? Today is the last day of the probability. Yes. You're right. Yes. Yeah, but we will come back to probability problems in the future. Okay, we stop here today. Have a nice weekend. When's the weekend yet?